All right, so here we are at the bottom of the unit for sweet tea. <clears throat> you can see there's a lot of vegetation competition coming in right now. Salmonberry, elderberry, vine maple, uh, just all over the place here. So we're going to come in and use some vegetation control to, uh, to try and help give those baby trees uh, a leg up. There's that matchstick unit over there that we're now below. And off in the distance here, you can hear the raging river. You can probably see there's a lot more mosquitoes and no CMs around me uh, because of the dampness. And <clears throat> you can also see it's, it's hard to tell because it's kind of been uh, grown over with vegetation, but there's some ruts from a machine there that go that direction. They come up here. I can tell the machine was just right down in there. Um, there's machine ruts here and machine ruts there. And so rutting is one of the things we need to, to watch out for, especially in soils that are easily erodible. Um, these soils here are not necessarily those easily erodible soils, however. So we're far less concerned with uh, using that type of machinery here. And also, uh, because these soils are so well drained, even though we're, we're down here, uh, you know, basically, it wasn't too long ago the Raging River was here. I would be standing in it. And you can see... There's no more big cobbles, finer rock, gravel. You know, it's, this has been, uh, again, here's a rut. So this has been overturned. Um, that has some charcoal in it there. There's not a big deep road cut here because we're basically at the bottom of, you know, the old stream pathway. Here's a culvert that we put in for the sale. Um, again, there were only a couple culverts down here and it wasn't getting enough drainage, pro proper drainage. And so we added that culvert there to get, so the idea is that <clears throat> it just disperses uh, over um, the forest floor here and it's not gonna create channelization you know, we had a pretty, pretty wet winter this past winter. It was extremely wet. And yet, you know, there's not a ton of channelization there. We'll hopefully come back in 40 years and this won't be a stream necessarily. Uh, it, like I come across, when I lay this sail out, I came across, you know, not enough culverts uh, being put in along the roads when it was originally logged. And again, we're talking third, third generation now of trees and so the rules were different um and um you know part of our deal is to part of our goal is to improve water quality um and lessen erosion we don't want to create streams and wetlands um because that's going to impact the ability for us to harvest timber in the future if we didn't put two more culverts up this road here we would come back in 40 years and this could be a stream and then we would have to buffer it 100 feet or so off of either side um, and it's kind of cool there you can actually see it hopefully you can see it the old cable too from when they logged this uh probably the second time i would say maybe the first uh but let's look at this road cut over here you can see the soils are much darker right much much darker that's the first thing I notice. Uh, this is interesting in here. Um, that redox going on there. Look at that orange. But you know, it's very fine material too that we're pulling out of here. You know, it's got a lot of silt in it. Um, you know, this is even almost, this is too damp. But 
it's pretty fine material it doesn't feel too gritty in my fingers you know we do have some larger cobbles here but again we don't have much of a you know a large you know gash in the side of the hill that's going to show us um you know a lot of profile here this is obviously where a landing was and and you can kind of see this material in here it's got some cobbles in it but it's got a lot of fine little gravel in it it's very dark you know even if we get back into it you know if we're thinking this is maybe even weathered uh, from um you know from the outside of the end but like i said this is pretty recent so um it's been disturbed pretty recently but you know it looks like you can imagine um you know what the bottom of a creek might be uh silty uh lots of organic matter from you know dead animals and uh you know all kinds of inputs you know typically streams have a lot of deciduous vegetation around them you know so they get annual inputs of leaves and you know just so forth and you know on on and on um this has definitely some organic inputs here but these aren't necessarily the ones we want unfortunately uh like you've seen in some of the other landing areas i'm not as worried about compaction here as much as i am just the amount of carbon here is going to take your nutrient um you basically when you're looking at the productivity of a soil you're looking at the carbon and nitrogen ratio and if your carbon which is this bark is way too high and, and it'll cause nitrification or the basically the, the the critters the microorganisms will hold on to all the nitrogen in the soil um and it won't be available for plant growth uh, as you can see the ruts the bunch are made and everything you can see them in here you know it, it moved the soil around uh you know a little bit uh but i would i would argue you know that you don't really um first of all i'm not worried about compaction here second of all uh because the soils are so well drained even though we are to lake you know our old lake or stream bottom uh other areas would might have soils like that i'm i'm not saying my geographic location necessarily um is indicating or influencing that if you know what i mean but uh more so you know <clears throat> excuse me soils soils are just so different in so many different places you know because of you know those five soil forming base factors and um <clears throat> you know here we have i think a lot of parent material influence of the lake bottom but we don't have um like we did uh, on the other side of the ra uh the raging over by rattlesnake ridge we had a lot more of that compacted glacial till here it seems to be um more weathered basically and the soils are better drained over here not saying occasionally you'll find a dip or um you know a, uh, a pip or a little wet area they're all over the place <clears throat> and you might have a little compaction there but here i don't think I think the soils are great for the trees the other point i want to make is you know the forest is really resilient look it's this was logged just this last summer and it you know already the vegetation's back i think you know the sun actually hurts the sword fern more than the uh um, herbicide that we use because uh, we'll come back here in a year after we spray herbicide and uh this will be 90 percent gone burned back like i said and uh then we'll plant it next uh, uh late winter early spring and we'll have a bunch of baby trees in here they're gonna love it this is great soil we're gonna take good care of them you can see uh the trees back there along uh, the tree line now uh that's a buffer off of an archaeological site called the town of Kariston. and uh then we have these trees over here 
which are representative again of the stand that we just cut and that's the raging river so i'm just pointing that out to let you know kind of how young the trees were of course you can see the ones in the leaf tree groups and then one more thing i'll point out before we get into the woods are again the different sizes of stumps that you can see clearly here you know there's about 20 or so huge stumps in the background here which is about a two acre area or, or so and then there's a lot of the other intermediate stumps dispersed between and then you get up and see the smaller stumps that we cut which you can barely see because the vegetation has grown up over top of them because they were cut so sh close to the ground and um i think we're gonna go in and uh take a walk in the woods here and see if we can find any artifacts <laughs> 